How many of you had a package delivered to your house today? In the last week, how many of you have had groceries or takeout delivered or checked the weather forecast? These everyday activities have one thing in common. They're made possible by satellite technology. Right now, 2,700 man-made objects are orbiting the Earth, beaming down GPS, banking, weather, and military data. Getting these satellites from the launch pad up into a precise orbit in outer space requires rocket engines. Just like gas-powered cars, rockets have engines that convert the chemical energy stored in fuel into motion. In a car, the hot expanding gases are captured by the engine's pistons and transformed directly into mechanical motion. In a rocket engine, the hot expanding gases shoot directly out of the bottom of the combustion chamber, producing thrust. I'm part of a research team that's developing a new rocket engine called the Rotating Detonation Rocket Engine, or RDRE for short. The RDRE breaks the mold of conventional rocket engine design by using a fundamentally different way to harness the energy that's stored in fuel. In order to understand this difference, we're gonna have to begin with an equation any high school chemistry student can recite from memory. A hydrocarbon like methane plus oxygen reacts to form carbon dioxide and water. The reactants on the left are rearranged through combustion to form the products on the right, unleashing the energy that's used to create thrust. In the world of combustion, the star of the show is the arrow at the center of the equation. It represents the chemical reactions that drive molecular change forward. Normal, everyday combustion occurs via a process called deflagration, which you can think of as simple burning. But under the right conditions, an alternate path called detonation, think explosions, can be taken. While both modes end up with the same final arrangement of molecules, the two paths behave entirely different. We encounter deflagration every day through running car engines and backyard barbecues, and it's what's used to power all modern rocket engines. Let's see deflagration in action. This bowl has been filled with a mixture of soap and water. I'm using this balloon that has been filled with propane to create fuel bubbles. When I introduce an initial energy source, the reaction will begin. Heat transfer, which is the exchange of energy between molecules, is what causes the flame to spread from that initial spark and then travel through the rest of the bowl. We see this process occur in slow motion during a wildfire. At the edge of the flame, the untouched grass is slowly being heated, raising its temperature until it begins to burn and the, fryer is able to, and the fire is able to creep forward. This is exactly what just happened in the bowl, but at a faster speed. The other mode of combustion is detonation. Instead of using heat transfer to move the flame, detonation spread with a pressure wave. Sound is a pressure wave. And if I talk louder, I can put more energy into it. If you create a strong enough pressure wave that compresses the right mixture of fuel and oxygen, that mixture will combust, adding even more energy back into the passing pressure wave. And it's the coupling of these two processes that creates a detonation. With a high-speed camera, that pressure wave can be seen after a detonation. Just like sound, it moves away from its source, creating an expanding bubble of compression around the source of the detonation. Let's see this in action. Now, before I begin the second demonstration, I must say that hearing protection is absolutely required for this one. I'm going to use the same soap and water mixture. However, this time I've also added oxygen, which will increase the initial reaction speed and enable a weak detonation to form. Again, with the introduction of an initial energy source, the reaction begins. <laughs> Detonations move way faster than deflagration, up to 4,000 miles per hour, which is twice the speed of a bullet. More importantly, they're, better, they're more efficient at converting the chemical energy that's stored in fuel into thrust. Harnessing such a rapid release of energy without destroying your combustion chamber is no easy task. It's the reason why rocket designers from the 1950s all the way up to present day have opted to rely on deflagration to power rockets. The RDRE is the first rocket engine to overcome this limitation, and it's able to do so by using a specially designed cylindrical combustor. 
One end of the combustor is open. That's where the hot exhaust shoots out, and the other end is closed, which is where a mixture of fuel and oxygen are injected. Instead of producing a single loud bang, like we just saw in the second demo, the shape of the combustor allows the pressure wave from the detonation to revolve around the engine's perimeter, constantly moving into freshly injected reactants and leaving hot, high-pressure products behind. This results in a perpetual detonation, one that endlessly chases itself around the combustion chamber, completing about 30,000 laps every second. To the naked eye, our DRV exhaust looks pretty similar to a conventional rocket engine. But when viewed with a high-speed camera, the individual revolving detonation can be seen. Now, depending on the particular design of the RDRE, as well as the mixture of fuel and oxygen that's used, different numbers of detonations will be present. In this test case, you can see three of them. RDRE development is moving fast. My team has already conducted 1,500 prototype engine firings on several different RDRE concept designs in the last three years. Our calculations already show a theoretical 10% improvement in thermal efficiency, and we're beginning to solve the more practical problems of rocket engine design, like vacuum performance and propellant delivery. Now I know 10% more efficient might sound a little underwhelming, but in the world of rocket propulsion, that's a huge deal. Between the government and private companies, the US has an $86 billion per year space economy, which you and I, as taxpayers, have to foot the bill for. The RDRE can help cut these costs, not just through improved fuel economy, but by offering an entirely new, more robust engine architecture. Let's look at three examples that highlight some of these benefits. First, maintaining stable combustion in a conventional rocket engine is a challenge. The Mammoth F1 engine that was used to get man to the moon is a classic example of this problem. During the engine's development, researchers discovered that deflagration engines could burn unpredictably, like a candle fluttering in the wind. The resulting vibrations from this fluctuation would literally shake the engine to pieces as it was running, ultimately resulting in catastrophic failure. Even with NASA and the F1 engine designers racing as fast as they could to get a man on the moon by the end of the decade, it still took four years and 2,000 full-scale engine tests in order for them to fully resolve this issue with their engine. Our DREs are designed to harness combustion instabilities. It's actually what creates that revolving detonation inside the combustion chamber. This attribute eliminates a huge design challenge, saving a significant amount of time and money that would have otherwise been spent on development. Example two, conventional rocket engines have extremely complex mechanical systems. In order to achieve efficient burn, deflagration-based rocket engines use pumps to pressurize the liquid fuel and oxygen all the way up to 4,000 PSI. The pumps are the size of a mini-fridge, have the same horsepower as 25 Ferraris, and have to move liquid oxygen that's been chilled all the way down to negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Their design is one of the most challenging parts of building a modern rocket engine. The RDRE also requires high pressure in order to achieve efficient combustion. But instead of relying on a complex mechanical pump, the RDRE is able to leverage that revolving pressure wave inside of its combustion chamber to generate the necessary compression. RDREs do still need a pump to physically move the propellant from the tank into the engine, but with an order of magnitude lower pressure and horsepower requirements, its design becomes relatively simple. Example three. Satellites in orbit have only a finite amount of fuel in their tank, and once they've consumed that, they lose a lot of their value. U.S. geostationary weather satellites are equipped with an onboard engine that they use to maintain the correct orbit for the duration of their 15-year life. Replacing the current satellite engine with an RDRE would boost fuel efficiency, gaining two more years or 13% life out of the onboard fuel. There are currently four of these satellites in orbit, and there are two more scheduled to launch this year. At $700 million per copy, life extension for this satellite series alone represents a huge ability to save costs. RDREs still need more development to prove that they're ready to power a billion dollar system. But with a solid scientific advantage and a well-engineered design, I know they're up to the challenge. Right now, there are 2,700 man-made objects 
put into orbit around the Earth using deflagration engines. I can't wait to see how our everyday lives are going to improve once our DREs get to start helping with the heavy lifting. Thank you.